Okay, so let's now discuss about the preference or preferences of the technology generation. So last video we have discussed about lesson four, which is the bridging bridging the generation gap. Okay, so of course next we'll be discussing what are those uh, preferences of the, the technology generation after determining the generation gap we'll now um, discuss the preference of the present generation or the digital learners okay now what the old generation likes may not be the same as what the new generation prefers in their life of course um thinking that the mode or the style or everything in the in the present generation or in the new generation is just the same with the old generation is foolish okay let's not think about that okay it's understandable and it is a common sense na isipin na mag-iba yung generation nila at yung generation ng um, digital learners okay uh, it's different in their life work leisure sad to say much of the good things enjoyed by elders when they were students are no longer available in the new generation okay obsolete na okay for example in education dati meron tayo sa curriculum natin na nagtatanim yung mga bata pero ngayon wala na siya sa curriculum just like um vocational cultural and values classes have also been minimized due to emphasis on the uh, basic of English, mathematics, and, uh, and science. In the field of education, it is important that critical differences in perceptions between old and young, which create a generation gap, need to be discussed. Okay? That's why we are discussing from our last video, or last lesson natin, in the bridging the generation gap, until now we are discussing this topic okay i have al i've also mentioned na it is important because we are trying to produce um professionals for the future hindi pa atras knowing na yung future natin ay those um technologically uh literate um professionals so we have to prepare those kind of professionals okay. so let us now um, discuss those one by one first we have here single and multi-track activity patterns so the old generation has a build of slow and single track pattern of activities so life has been comfortable and slower for the for those oldies as they watch fa and follow television telenovelas like wala hanggan okay so diba kung naalala nyo pa ako naalala ko nun we are um, inaabangan namin every night okay yung mga uh, telebabad Okay. The new generation is exposed to quick flicking, uh, video games, mobile phone, texting, socializing through social websites, and downloading text, music, photos, video with adaptness and task switching speed. Okay, so mabilis na lang ngayon. Netflix, o oh, download ka lang, di ba? mag-avail ka lang ng para maka-access ka sa Netflix so lahat na ng episodes nandun na just one day tapos mo na yung isang season mabilis or magpapapasa ka lang ng uh, buong Korean novela tapos mo na yung movie hindi mo na kailangang maghintay ng 
uh, nine months or six months para matapos yung story, di ba? Or di-download mo lang yung e-book, di ba? Ganun naka-instant, okay? At pwede kang mag... Uh, kahit ano, ma-access mo, di ba? Okay. Next, we have the text and visuals. So, our parents read books or book texts <coughs> excuse, enriched by illustrations and photos. Okay? So, pumunta pa, uh, that time or in their time, pumunta pa sila sa school library, gumagamit ng card catalog para mahanap yung book na kailangan nila or kaya hiramin nila tapos doon na nila babata- babasahin at home okay so yun yung life nila before learning pero ngayon um, the technology or the digital generation has greater affinity to visuals so isang click lang, isang search lang or even um, just saying the word and their google will provide you those photos and videos and everything that you need okay, colored pa so ganun ka instant, in fact they have been exposed since childhood to cable television and video images especially cartoon characters and then uh, to computer images in such a manner that their visual fluency or abilities have been sharpened and enhanced. Diba? Uh, isang tingin mo lang sa meme, gets mo na agad. That's why it's really important to use visuals, photos, videos, images for us to use in our lessons. Okay? It's because they are easily bored when just reading okay, no bored sila nahihirapan silang nakagets ng topic okay, that's why um, we are being encouraged to use images in our uh, lessons next, linear versus hypermedia the past 30 year old generation has obtained the information in linear, logical, and sequential manner. On the positive side, this has made them more logical, focused, and reflective thinkers. Okay, linear. Parang, uh, they are following a certain um, system and the order of their learning. So, hintay-hintay lang sila kung ano yung uh, sinas- uh, binibigay na information sa kanila of the school or the teacher okay pero in the new generation it follows a personal random access of hyperlink digital information it's because information can easily be accessed for example if you are curious with this um, topic you can easily um, get it from the internet okay wala nang sinusunod na mga linear linear ma prerequisite na ano. if you're um, if you think that there is an information regarding a certain topic nag introduce sa inyo then you want to you know advance um, study the topic or the lesson you can easily access it okay you do not need to wait for another sem another um, meeting for it to access or minsan na tututunan in the post, di ba, pag nababasa sa mga posts sa internet, sa Facebook, sa Twitter, so, somehow, merong iba-ibang information, additional information na um, nababasa ng learner. Okay? There was once a uh, post na nabasa ko, uh, her, or his, it, uh, his ate is asking him something that her ate, ate is not actually expecting na alam nung kapatid niya na bata na lalaki yung tinatanong niya parang na shock na lang siya na alam niya kahit elementary pa lang siya yun pala 
uh, natutunan, natutunan niya sa linalaro niyang uh, video game which is Minecraft. It was about I don't know if you have already read this in Facebook but that was about the glass. San daw gawa yung glass. Expected, expected ng ate na hindi alam nung kapatid niya. Pero alam pala nung katap, kapatid niya. Kasi nilalaro niya sa Minecraft. Okay. So, ganun sila ka um, exposed sa information. Okay. They don't need to reach this certain level na malaman nila itong uh, certain information. Okay. So, the new generation. Okay. Tapos na. Thus, they appear, uh, appear to be more easily bored and distracted during class lecture. And we have here independent versus uh, social learners. Uh, the traditional education system gives priority to independent learning prior to participative work. Okay. So, the, uh, the generation before, the generation of learners before focuses on um, independent learning. So, yun yung generation na malakas yung competition. Okay? But the new learners are encouraged to um, do a collaborative work. Okay? Are already acquainted with digital tools that adapt to both personal and participative work. They take the opportunity for dozens of instantaneous ways to communicate with other with others or through, for example, through mobile calls and text, emails, Facebook, YouTube, MySpace, Twitter, etc. So, experts describe this mode of digital learning as one that is based on experimentation, discovery, and intuition. Okay? And this makes them um, enjoy what they are doing. Okay? Next, we have learning to do versus learning to pass the text okay. all teachers teach students in order to help them pass tests and complete the course requirement okay. so these are the basis that time okay in the old generation they were taught they were trained to pass tests or complete a course on the other hand, the new digital learners simply wish to acquire skills, knowledge, and habits as with, uh, windows of opportunity afford them to learn. Okay. Our parents have completed a course and have engaged in a permanent job for most of their lives. Okay. Because that was their generation. Yun yung trend sa kanila. A different work situation awaits the digital uh, digital generation with contractual multitask and multi career opportunities in a digital world ahead of us. Okay, so there are um, some millionaires today that they personally don't um, advise their children to be. Um, you know, top students, as long as they are um, doing good in school and acquiring skills as much as they can, they're contented with it. Okay? That's um, the new trend in, uh, in the current generation. Okay? Um, acquiring more skills, becoming... Um, Acquiring more skills and um, multi-career 
Okay? So, yun yung pinaka-in sa kanila ngayon. In fact, um, I don't know if it, if this is true, but companies like Google's, uh, Google, they don't really, what they call this, focus on those degree holders. As long as you have the talent, you have the ability to learn, solve problem, you're in. Okay? So, that's how um, our learners work today or that's that's the way they are now okay so that's why if your student is not good with this subject not good with um you know um solving math problem not good with writing essay not good with drawing okay do not judge them because we all have our um, unique um, skills and talents. We are here to mold them, to facilitate their learning, not to judge them, not to make them who they are not, not to, um, you know, ipagpilitan yung ayaw nila, di ba? fish, ito, meron yung uh, parang do not teach the fish how to walk next we have delayed rewards and instant gratification the traditional reward system in education consists in the grades honors, certificate, medals, and diplomas. So, yun yung um, focus dati. Okay? Yun yung basis nila ng success. Okay? Um, rewards, yung grades, mga medals. Okay? Including future jobs, the traditional school's reward system consists of unclear rewards for uh, performance on the other hand digital learners and their own experience uh, more immediate gratification through immediate scores from games so nag mas nag enjoy sila doon enjoy con- con- conversation from webcam calls um, excitement from email chats and inviting comments from their facebook account so they are um, exposed to immediate or instant gratification. Magpo-post sila, hinihintay nila kung marami na bang likes. So, they check it from time to time and they feel overwhelmed. Pag, diba, pag maraming likes, maraming reacts yung post or in a video game, kung nag-top rank ka na ba. Okay, kung correct ba yung answer mo okay so mas nag enjoy sila doon yung immediate feedback that's why uh, medyo naboboard sila sa school yung ibang teachers naman of course nag adapt naman tayo nag adjust naman tayo in fact meron tayong mga iba't ibang strategies to do that And lastly, we have rote memory versus fun learning. So, before, teachers feel obliged to deliver or to deliver in contest or content-based courses, uh, the learning of which is measured or measurable by standard tests. So, it's more on, you know, giving the topic, delivering the lesson, making them memorize things, and then measuring it by giving them tests, written, paper, and pencil. So that was the mode before. Digital learners prefer fun 
On the other hand, digital learners prefer fun learning which is relevant and instantaneously useful to them. Learning is uh, play to new learners and not surprisingly there is much fun in digital world outside the school. That's why they are um, parang pag yung mode of teaching sa school medyo um, traditional pag traditional siya medyo naboboard yung student that's why we really need to come up with an activity that um, will keep them working doing something activities fun activities okay sometimes we uh, kahit high school na di ba they are we are still preparing fun activities just for them to um, still focus and of course enjoy while learning so in summary teachers need to connect with digital learners Okay, we really need to um, know them, apply what we are learning now, and use it in our teaching. Okay, because we do not have choice because we are um, thinking about our students. Okay, how they learn, how will they be able to learn? Paano tayo makarelate sa kanila? Okay. And not think of them as entering their past 30 years old traditional world. Kailangan isang tabi na natin yung generation natin. Isipin natin yung generation ng students natin na hinahawakan. Okay. So, tanong mo sa sarili mo. Makarelate ba sila sa activity na to? O baka obsolete na to? Baka too old na to for them so might as well do some revision well there are apparent setbacks or limitations to digital learning there are opp- opportunities to tap through so we have here the new learners digital fluency with visual learning with the use of visuals media and multimedia using hyperlink multimedia for projects that enhance work focus and reflection problem solving activities to suit the new generation style and preference for fun and relevant learning